the warmest of greetings to you and welcome to Happily Ever Teaching, where we help you enthrall your learners in every subject under the sun using the best teaching method known to science, storytelling. To do this, we feature special guest educators who are passionately keen for your children to become amazing and successful human beings. I am storyteller Chip Cahoon, and with me this week is... Hi, I'm Bex, and I'm a primary school teacher from Cambridgeshire. I've experienced teaching across the age range, being a deputy head, and I'm also the curriculum and teaching and learning lead, and I have the privilege of training and releasing the next generation of teachers as well. And today we are exploring what maths we can teach with this week's folktale from Japan. You can listen to the story by downloading our sister podcast, Fables and Fairy Tales, or search our website, epictales.co.uk, for The Underwater Kingdom. There you'll find a video of me telling the story that you can share with your children. And if you sign up as an epic educator, you'll also get a copy as an ebook or paperback illustrated by Winnie the Witch's very own Corky Paul, as well as the full audiobook for you to download at any time, and even some tips for telling the story yourself. Right now, though, let's continue our discussion with Bex here by seeing what maths she has uncovered with Hiroshima's help. Have you got as much maths for us as you had English for us yesterday? <laughs> Well, surprisingly, yes, because maths is the one that I normally struggle with in some um, some stories. But lots and lots came to my mind about um, maths and Hiroshima. Um, so I'll, I'll kick off with the uh, younger age group, if that's all right, with our four to seven year olds um, mm -hmm. and what I would um, pull out of this story and the maths links we've got. So I think um, there's a lot about size in this story. So there's there's the the smaller turtle that um, was rescued on the beach, the daughter turtle, and then the bigger turtle yeah. um, that transported Hiroshima down under the sea to the Dragon Palace. So I think mm -hmm. I'd look at a lot about size and um, and ordering and comparing size and length and measuring because that's that's quite a big uh, part yeah. of the uh, of the curriculum for our for lower down the school and um, so for our key stage one children. So uh, starting in early years it's um really comparing things by their size so ordering like turtles from smallest to biggest turtle or longest to shortest turtle so mm -hmm. lots and lots um of amazing language that the children can do you can have actual like objects that the children can order or you can have pictures and then looking at measuring different sea creatures in um standard and non-standard units so you measure them in cubes and then mm -hmm. measure them in um, centimeters and getting the children to record who you know who's found the biggest turtle i think i'd and um, give my older children or my like uh, the gifted and talented children in my class maybe a challenge and say okay so we've measured the length of the turtle well how would you measure around a turtle's shell because I'm oh, always yeah. interested in how they'd measure something that's circular mm. so how how do we know who's which turtle's got the biggest shell and then get them to hopefully think about maybe something like using some string to go around and then stretching out the string so they can measure it and doing a bit of estimation and predicting because I, I always find that mm. that further that the, the littler children our younger children don't like getting things wrong so they don't really like estimating even though you say it's having a good guess like if you guess nine then the answer is ten that's okay um, mm. but they often don't like getting things wrong so and making estimating really fun so guessing um, how many like cubes long a turtle this turtle might be if we know how long yeah. this turtle is for example so I think there'd be lots of measuring lots of um sea creatures for them to explore and order in <laughs> size you could also then get them to look at um other sea creatures that aren't maybe mentioned in the story like how long is a um a blue whale mm -hmm. and maybe you could go and measure that in your playground and look at really the different sizes or how many blue whales could we fit in our playground probably one um, but just <laughs> thinking about the other uh, size and of all of the different creatures just thinking about what you were saying there about estimating sizes storytelling is a really great way of helping to overcome that fear of estimation that you you mentioned there uh, certainly what i found if if you were to do an activity like the one that you're mentioning actually within the story so you have Hiroshima perhaps um, somewhat mathematically minded himself sitting on the back of this turtle and wondering at all of the different sizes of creatures that he's seeing maybe even comparing it to creatures back on land I suppose if you wanted mm. to um, create more of a, a story reason for doing it a great thing to actually ask the children is what Hiroshima might have been thinking 
And you can turn to one child, one particularly keen child, and let them have their guess. Then you can turn to another child、um, and let them have their guess, and just say to them, "Yeah, both of those thoughts went through Hiroshima's mind. He had other thoughts too."、Mm. And then you can turn to other children. Soon, by the end, you have everybody's hand up because everybody is keen to put a thought inside Hiroshima's head. But as long as you can show through the world of the story how. Every idea is valid. That does start to overcome the worry about estimating、yeah. and getting things wrong, because Hiroshima is literally just sitting on the back of the turtle and doing some estimation himself.、Mm. So they're just helping to create that part of the character. That would be really, yeah. I love that thought of actually get, getting them to to do it in the moment of the story, because、mm. I do love a pause of a story. So. But I think like the children need to use the words like I think that is a、uh, like greater than, less than, equal to, longer、mm-hmm. than, shorter than. So they could say, oh, that's much like、uh, that seahorse is much smaller than a, a rhinoceros. I don't. That's a really rubbish idea.、Um, <laughs> smaller <laughs> than a kitten.、Accurate. Yeah, a kitten. For, so、Or、smaller yeah, than、I've, a finger, even. Perhaps. Yeah. yeah. So actually, that would be really effective, and I think they'd really enjoy it. Um, and linked to that, actually,、um, another thing that I think we find as teachers something that can be really amazing, but we can end up doing it in quite a、um, not as interesting way as we would like to is、um, collecting statistics and data, and、um, so、oh, like making、okay. pictograms and、um, bar charts with our younger children.、And、I was thinking that if they could, whilst Urashima's.、Um, Traveling underwater. If we could be making a note of what he sees, maybe getting out Corky's illustrations again and、um, <laughs> looking at what they can see in the pictures and counting the different sea creatures we could see, or getting a big.、Um, I've used a lot like、um, backgrounds of、um, the photographs that people have taken under the sea and seen how many fish we can count, and then、yeah. getting the children to turn that into statistics so that、um, Urashima can remember. But obviously, it's. Something he might forget later in the story, but so that he can remember <laughs> what he's seen and say, okay, has he seen more? He's seen more angelfish than he's seen seahorses,、um, or seven more angelfish than he's seen seahorses、um, with the older children. So I think you can do a lot with statistics、yeah. and creating some really nice. It's a really, really good way of getting the children involved. So they can be Urashima riding on the turtle, seeing what he's seen, and even you can ma- they can make their own turtles to ride on, or just、mm-hmm. your, your standard school、um, PE hoops, and they can all get in a get on their own <laughs> turtle. And there was a brilliant way there of linking these subjects to to make a an entire week or fortnight or maybe even a month long unit of cross curriculum learning. Because if you are doing all of this、um, mathematical record collecting. Um, and then stuffing it in Urashima's pockets—that's going to be one of the first clues to who he is after he's lost his memory, isn't、yeah. it? So you can then turn back to one of the ideas that you brought us yesterday of having to work out the sequel and how he maybe gets his memory back and finds his way back to his underwater princess. Yeah, and they've got and they've got lots more facts, lots、yeah. more things that they know that he's seen and done.、Exactly. So yeah. Um, and then thinking about okay, how do you transport that idea of like、um, size ordering into、um, the Curriculum for our eight to eleven-year-olds,、mm. so for our key stage two children, they've、um, they've got quite a lot of learning on、um, like ratio, proportion, and area and perimeter.、Mm. So I was thinking that you could do exploring、um, like how much bigger is the. Giant turtle than the smaller turtle. How can we work、mm. it out? Like, and、um, how could we make a bigger seahorse? Like, how many? How big would a big seahorse be? If we know the small seahorse is this big, we know this is how much bigger the big turtle is. How do we work out how big a giant seahorse、yeah. would be? So I was thinking you could do a lot about、um, ratio and proportion and size, and then you could also. I was thinking about doing、um, area and perimeter of the.、Um, Dragon Palace. So it, you don't just do、uh, in particularly in year five and year six. It's area and perimeter of irregular、mm. shapes. And、uh, and obviously when you're thinking about a Dragon Palace, it's not going to be flat walls,、no. is it? It's going to be like curvy, jaggedy bits here and there for the dragon teeth. That's what I imagine. So they could work out what they th- how big they think the Dragon Palace is going to be. They could create their own Dragon Palace for another team to work、mm-hmm. out、um, how big each Dragon Palace is. So I'm thinking you could do a lot about still working on the se- the theme of like size ordering and comparison,、um, but taking it further up the school and looking at、uh, ratio, area, and perimeter、yeah. as well. 
I suppose you could also you could turn it into a bit of a competition, or it might escalate into a competition anyway if they're trying to create their dragon palaces. Um, but perhaps also giving them some rules and restrictions could be useful here because, OK, the Dragon Palace probably is huge, but it's also hidden. So trying to make sure mm. that they keep that fact in mind when they are designing their Dragon Palace and keeping the, the proportions to a, a protectable size, I suppose. Yeah, because they need to know about how the, which ocean we're talking oh, about. Yes. So obviously... Yeah. We're, we need to know um, where we are. Yeah. So obviously we're in Japan. And um, what's our ocean that surrounds Japan? How big? How deep is the deepest part? And therefore, how big can your palace actually yeah, be? Exactly. So there's maybe I'd probably have some rules up on the board as we come in. So today you're going to be designing the Dragon Palace for Hiroshima that Hiroshima visits. However, you need to be aware of this, this, and this. And then they can come and you can say, "No, it won't mm. work. Too big. Off you go." Think again, or let them do that to to each other's designs. See if they can yeah. they can pick out um, the the reasons why they wouldn't have designed it that way themselves. Mm. Thinking of the ratios that you've mentioned as well, would you look at something like the ratio of the circumference of a shell to the length of a turtle, for example, and see mm. whether that ratio holds up as the turtles change in size? Yeah, definitely. And and linking it to the parts of because your like head fits into your body a certain amount of time and your like arm width is meant to be the same size as your height as well. There's lots of interesting things about your um about other ratios of our bodies. Mm. And so I think I'd probably look at those and then link that to if our turtle shell is this size, does that mean how big's our tortoise? And yeah, I think they would they'd be really fascinated. Or can you get a turtle that has a different size shell to its body, yeah. like in proportion. And um, so get them to really, really explore that. I think they they love a good question and they love proving teachers wrong, particularly up <laughs> further up school, I've noticed. So if you can challenge your teacher, they'd love that. And then I've got one more, one more idea about maths. And I think you can't okay. really think about the story of Hiroshima without thinking about the uh, mathematical like concept of time. Oh, so of obviously course. you've got yeah. lots and lots of time um, like how long is a day in the sea? How long mm. is a year, a year, a day, uh, a minute? How in comparison to a worldly minute? Because obviously Hiroshima doesn't remember how long he's been gone, but it's been seven hundred years. So how long is how long is that in Sea yeah, World? Yeah, he, he's he's spent a couple of weeks there, or, or a few weeks, maybe a month or so, and yet that's managed to turn into seven hundred years. So that, that's ratios again, in a way, isn't it? The the mm. ratio of like yeah. one minute to a day, or, or however long. I think you can't not explore yeah. time. So obviously you can look at minutes and hours and with the um, younger children, then you can be looking at how long you can be doing the ratios with your older children. But I think you've definitely got to look at, it's a great way into exploring time. Um, and even like them understanding how long a minute is. So I always play that game where you have a sand timer and you <laughs> oh, you time a minute on your watch and you get the children to um, all stand up and they have to sit down when they think it's a minute. And lots of, even adults, I can't do it very well, <laughs> but just that real understanding of time and what it means and, and telling the time. And how do you tell the time under water? How do you do that? Do you use the moon? Because we, we know the moon's really important to the tides. Um, so do they use the moon at <laughs> to tell the time? Is, it, is there daytime like our nighttime? Yeah, well, they, they might not be able to see the moon or the sun. So, yeah, they might just have to go on the movement of the tides. Yes. Yeah, so how do they tell the time? So it'd be a great, like, it's obviously mm. the, that kind of mass links again into the in, into the English that we were talking about yesterday. But actually, I think it's, it, you can't look at this story about a great deal of time passing without looking at, without helping the children to understand what time actually is. No, and if we had time ourselves, I would have loved <laughs> to also have an episode on, like, designing a clock that works with the power of the tides. Yeah, underwater. Yeah, underwater. That would be fantastic that's all we have time for today folks if you try out any of these ideas or if you'd like us to help you teach a topic you are soon to cover with your young learners please let us know on social media using at teach happily or leave us a review using your favorite podcast app please also share this podcast with your colleagues and help us start a story-led revolution in classrooms around the world so children everywhere can learn in a way that's effective memorable and enjoyable all at the same time 
Tomorrow, Hiroshima will help us teach science. But right now, it only remains for us to say cheerio, and we hope to hear your story soon. So, cheerio! And we hope to hear your story